Our first story is about a different kind of construction project that never had a grand opening or a ribbon cutting. In fact, if you went there, you really wouldn't notice anything. But then, that's the point. So when we went back to find out how things were going, we needed help to search for signs of success. These folks aren't just splashing around. They actually do this for a living, but they do enjoy getting out of the office. And in their jobs, getting out of the office means really getting out of the office. Steve Harrington is with the Nature Conservancy. Kim Medley and Beth Biro are with the Tyson Research Center. So there's a pretty decent hole here. I'll see if I can knock these guys in first. And they're here in a bend in LaBarque Creek in Jefferson County, trying to scare up some fish. Now, they're doing this for us, but it is the kind of work that is done here to see how the creek is doing. One way to find out is who's living here, who's thriving. And while they came up empty the first few times, it really didn't take very long to get results. Yay! Oh, silver jaw minnow. I know these were in here. This is called a silver jaw minnow. If you look at its jaw, this is a minnow that likes decent habitat. Again, this is something you didn't expect to find? I didn't know they were in here. That's good. Yeah. We've been here before, and the first time there were a lot more people and there was a lot of heavy equipment. The story here isn't just what they did here on LaBarque Creek, it's why they did it. It was in June of 2017, and this little creek was getting a lot of attention. It drew a crowd of conservationists from government agencies and nonprofit organizations to see what was going on. What was happening was a rebuilding of a badly eroded bend in the creek in a way that would improve both its physical and its environmental health. In terms of fish biodiversity, it's been recorded over 40 species of fish in this little stream. Is that right? It's the highest biodiversity stream by far in the, in the St. Louis area. It travels just over six miles through mostly wooded, hilly, and undeveloped terrain before it empties into the Merrimack River south of Eureka and in its watershed are a state park and several conservation areas. The project is being carried out on a tight bend near highways F and FF. It's a piece of land now owned by Washington University's Tyson Research Center. Uh, during our recent flood events in the St. Louis area, the water has just come down a, a fairly straight stretch and just slammed right into the bank. Um, and has been cutting back the bank and eroding it and sending tons of sediment downstream. And sediment is one of the biggest threats to this kind of ecosystem. Dirt is washed away here in a storm and eventually, when the water slows down, it settles to the bottom. That can actually choke out habitat for small insects that actually serve as the base of the food web for stream ecosystems like this on Lubbock Creek. Now, streams and rivers naturally erode the earth and cut their path, but here, a previous landowner had cleared away the trees and other vegetation that helped stabilize this hairpin turn. And without that vegetation, the Bark Creek just kept cutting and cutting away. Hundreds and hundreds of tons just in the last two years of, of this land has poured into, this, into the Merrimack River Basin and into La Bark Creek. You could just build a wall, say, with rocks, but this is a green technique that will look and act more naturally. They started by digging out the bend that's been eroding, and they're building it back up in layers, starting with trees and brush, covering that with a biodegradable blanket, then a layer of dirt. So then with, more dirt, and then more cloth. And then, then you get yourself up to where you're right at the point where the river floods normally. You give it a little bit of a floodplain, you replicate a floodplain. This slows down the water, it prevents erosion, and it allows the stream to sort of repair itself. This was a demonstration project, good technique, but the cost is high. We came back two weeks later. The construction was done, but the new vegetation was just beginning to come up and more planting was planned. So we bided our time. Thought we'd wait a year or so and then have them come out for an update. Man, 
as you look at it, what do you see? Are you happy with it? I am very encouraged by the rapid um, change in habitat. Um, I'm not entirely sure that I expected to see so much growth on the banks. I see no exposure of, of sand along the banks, really no indication of any erosion. Um, and we're finding, we're finding a lot of fish, so we're very encouraged by, by the results. This guy is called the bleeding shiner. Native fish, the red that you see, if you can see that, if you can see the red on its uh, mouth and its fins, mm -hmm. is where it gets its name from. Breeding colors that the, that male, females will express it too a little bit, but males will get very colorful looking like their fins are bleeding. This is a fish only found in, um, uh, in Ozark systems and is a really good indicator of good habitat here uh, for this project and for Labar Creek in general called a northern studfish. Again, an, another good sign of good habitat. One of the big goals of this project was not only to reduce erosion, but also to create habitat for a small stream that's uh, one of the most biodiverse in the entire Merrimack River Basin. So can we create some fish habitat with this project? I think we did. It really demonstrates that you can improve upon a, a highly degraded system using this, this particular technique um, people have been trying to do this sort of thing, restoring uh, degraded stream banks for some time. And, and using this technique, what we've really shown here is that you can get stabilization of the stream bank pretty quickly and um, generation of habitat really rapidly and the fish come back. So it's really encouraging. It's called a central stone roller. Make the fish happy, I guess. And make the fish happy, which, you know, if you make the fish happy, you're making a lot of other things happy, um, making me happy. <laughs>